In this video, we're going to take a look at how to update iParts and some of the nuances about how files get created with these particular modeling files inside of Autodesk Inventor. Here I have the cube ipart updating IPT from our working files directory. Inside this file is our known variations of this cube. So the cube, double, triple, quad, and the angled variations thereof. Next, I'm going to add all these parts here, all these variations to an assembly. I'll start a new standard IAM, and I will place the cube ipart updating IPT from our working files directory. Here, I will just place them by individual selection of the table. Simply click each row in the dialog and then select in the graphics window where you would like to place them. It doesn't matter where we put them right now, just make sure you get every one placed. So here all my iParts have been placed. These are technically the children of the iPart. If I were to expand each one of these rows, change over to modeling view, I will see that there is a derived part link to the original cube iPart dash updating. These files are actually generated automatically for you. If I were to go to my open screen again, I would now see cube iPart dash updating Inside this folder is all of those children that were generated as I placed them into an assembly. I'm going to save this assembly as a container assembly. I'm also going to go ahead and close this for now. Back over on the original file here, the cube ipart dash updating, I'm going to make some modifications. So on the member scope for the angled cube, I'm going to remove this fillet. I would also like to change the color of all these variations. So here I'll change back to factory scope and adjust my color to a white oak with a natural medium gloss. As I go through each one of my variations, you can see the color has been updated. Now, in order to make changes to those existing children files that were created, the derive link will automatically take care of the geometric reference for the fillet that was removed and will also take care of the material as well. Here I will save this and then when I reopen one of those children such as the angled cube, notice how initially nothing has changed. It still has the fillet, it still has the old color to it. But look what's showing in front of my cube ipart dash updating. It is a lightning bolt. This lightning bolt shows that I have a pending update. So I will choose my local update up here at the top of my screen to see the update take place. I will also save the file to make sure that those changes stick. Now, if I would like to push all of those changes into those files, I will select my cube here, hold down shift, and make sure I select all my variations. And you do this by member name. You don't do this by listing your table here by keys. Then I'll right click and choose Generate Files. This will go through and force the update to all the children of this iPart. Now, if I were to open up, let's say the quad cube here, you can see the update has already occurred. If I were to open up my container assembly for my working files directory that I just saved, It'll let me know I have an update that needs to be made to the assembly components. Say yes, and I can see all the changes. Now, the real reason for the container assembly is for some users that are using the vault type of system for document management that comes with the software, they might need to create a container assembly that they can check out from the vault. Therefore, it would then check out all the children parts so updating can properly take place. If you do not do this and you're using the vault system, if you were to update your iPart factory, there's no guarantee that your iPart child will correctly update. In newer versions of vault, this has been remedied. If you're using a slightly older version of vault or are noticing issues, creating a container assembly can be a nice way to make sure everything updates properly. If you are using project files for library management, you might want to create a project file that is separate from your normal project file that would have the ability to edit your iParts and to update them correctly so that your updates will properly go through your files.
in this variation, I had eight different types of iParts, but in truth, I have nine files to manage. I have the original factory and then the eight children. If you are using a vault system, you might create a tenth file being the container assembly that just simply houses all the children.